Hey everyone, it's Sue here, and I have, I guess, a little bit different kind of video for you today. Um, so during Black Friday or Cyber Monday, <laughs> or one of those sale days, um, I did go on to, it was either Dick Blick or, um, or Jerry's Artorama, and I did purchase uh, this set of Van Gogh watercolor paints. Um, yeah, I saw Ari use them, and I was like, wow, I really like that. And so I decided, well, I had them in my cart for probably, I don't know, three or four days. And then I'm like, you know, after I saw her share on her channel, I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to go get them. Because they were half price. I got them for a really good price of $30, uh, regularly $60. So I was like, you know what, if I'm going to do it, now's the time to do it. So this is the way they arrived, okay? So they come in this beautiful, let me zoom in just a little bit, if I can here, uh, in this beautiful box, right? And I knew that they came in a box and it also came with this brush, um, a size six brush. And I knew that they, came in this box. But what I wasn't sure of was, well, is it is it a palette? Like, is it something for me to use or does it just store the paint tubes? So, you know, and you know, this is like perfect for mixing the whole thing, but I wasn't sure because it didn't say that it, that it did. So, Fortunately, I said, you know what, this, oh, I did get it from Dick Blick, that I wasn't sure, and this plastic palette is just a few dollars. So I'm like, well, let me grab one of these palettes just in case. And I'm glad that I did, because I'm going to put the Van Gogh paints in this palette. Perfect. Perfect. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's 20 wells, and then of course the mixing wells. Um, I thought, you know, this, this is so nice and heavy, like it's really, really well made. It's unfortunate that it's just to hold these. I mean, are you supposed to? No, see, you can't put the colors here because they're gonna run into one another. I don't know, I was just pretty surprised to tell you the truth. So, but anyway, I'm excited that I got it. And we're gonna go through and I'll show you the colors and we're gonna go ahead and put them in this palette right here. So I think what I want to do is to maybe keep the colors in pretty much the same order as I have this palette. This is my favorite palette. These are my Daniel Smith paints and I love them. They are my favorite. That palette is my favorite. I love it. But on occasion, I would like to, you know, play with some other paints on occasion. Um, but the way that I have these isn't necessarily the right way. <laughs> I don't think there's a, there is no right way. I shouldn't say it like that. But like I start with like really deep reds, like almost a brown going into red. And then this is opera pink. And then it goes into all just the beautiful, beautiful the shades of yellows and oranges. I have my iridescent over here, and then I have several greens. I have one, two, three, four, five. Five greens plus this, um, what is this called? Yellow? Uh, it is called Rich Green Gold, this one right here. Um, and I put it over here because, it, I don't know, 
because I had room over there <laughs> and it had the word gold in it. <laughs> and it's near the goldish paints. <laughs> There you go. Hey, it made sense to me at the time. Um, and so then I go into like some grays and then purple at the end here, which is just beautiful. Um, actually, I have Imperial Purple, Moon Glow, which is like a grayish purple. It's really pretty. And Amethyst Genuine. Then I have um, a couple blues, and then all my greens. So because I'm getting used to the paint being in that order, I think what I'm gonna do is kinda lay these out in like pretty much the same order. Not exactly the same. Um, so this is, let me read these to you. I don't know if anybody's like even interested in this, but I love watching other um, watercolor artists um, actually, you know, talk about their paint and do this kind of thing. I love to watch it. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how many people watch this video. <laughs> so uh, this is permanent lemon yellow. That's going to go all the way at the end because I have my other bright yellow which is cadmium yellow um, at the end on my Daniel Smith. Then this is um, azo yellow medium. And then it goes into a much deeper medium, um, deeper orange. Actually, this is called permanent red light. See, that looks orange. It has a very orange hue to it. And then this is really deep. So this is... Uh, Matter Lake Deep. And one of the reasons that I purchased this set as well was because it really didn't, I don't think I had any of the colors. Uh, I, of course, colors can be called different things for different brands, but for the most part, they have the same, the same names. So I was like, okay, you know, that, that's worth it to me then. All right, so now I have a little dilemma because I have really two beautiful, beautiful browns right here. So I have burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Now yellow ochre I do have in the Daniel Smith, so that color I do have. Um, see, if, for my Daniel Smith, I keep, where is it? One moment, please. Let me see if I can find my, my round palette. There it is. I got it. Oh, I got it. So this one is my Daniel Sp Smith browns into black and then a beautiful indigo. So that's what's in here. And um, so do I keep these in here? Yeah, I think I need to keep these in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, what is it? Burnt Sienna all the way at the end. That's what I'm gonna do, because I'll know then that that is my brown right here. Um, so my ochre is gonna go down here. I have that one, which is the which is a red, and this is a much deeper red. Okay, so I know I'm gonna do that like that. How many are in here anyway? Um, 12, I think. 12. So I have 12 paints and 20 pans. So that's great. So I'm going to, I think, go ahead and one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it's six. So exactly six. Um, and then I'll put six on the other side. Now, what I find interesting is that there's Chinese white. I don't, you know... Maybe since this is, I have to try this. See, a lot of times a watercolor artist won't use white because it takes away the transparency and takes away the watercolor look to it. But this is watercolor white. So I need to give that a try. I have no idea where to put it. Maybe I'll put it up here in this end over here. Uh, maybe that's what I'll do. You know, I'm gonna turn this around. 
like that. Okay, so I think I'm gonna put my white up here, and then I have gray, then I have my blues need to go over here. Maybe I'll put them down here. Let me read what they are. Uh, I can barely read these. Ultra Marine Deep and uh, I can't read that. Something uh, Cobalt Blue. So two different shades of blue. So maybe there and there. This is what? Payne's Gray. I don't think I have Payne's Gray. Um, I know I don't have Payne's Gray in Daniel Smith, or at least not in that palette. Then I, I have Viridian and I have Permanent Green. So I have two greens. So I'm gonna do something like this. Now, I'm gonna take out this brush because I'll definitely use the brush. It's a really nice uh, round brush, size six, Van Gogh. Now, I will store those paints in here. So I, I'm sure, I'm sure that the reason that, you know, they have this where there's the mixing pans over there is because it's for to use wet, right? So if I wanted to do something with yellow, I would take it, I'd put a little bit of yellow there and then put this away here and then I would use the paint over there. But I like the paint to dry. I prefer it like this. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and get these colors in here. I'll be right back. Alrighty, so my, my granddaughter needed me, so I had to hop off for a second. So all you do, and I try to do this fairly carefully, um, I try to squeeze from the end of the tube like you would, you know, with, um, with toothpaste. And try not to have it to where too much is going to come out the end. Whoops, see that? See how quick that came out? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, see, I don't want it too messy at the end of the tube when I close it up. I'm gonna go ahead and, wow, that red went all over the place. All right, and I think what I'm gonna do too, as I put the paints in there, I'm going to put them back in here, if I can get it open. Um, and then, so when I do my, my swatch of these, I'll know the, the name of them. So here's the brown, here's the red, and I'll continue on. So this is a, another red, but it's a much more orangey red. So I'm going to skip. Ooh. I'm going to skip, that one got messy, very gooey, very gooey. Um, oops, I almost dropped it. Okay, let me just see if I can clean that up a little bit, because that one got messy. All right, yeah, now I made a mess. <laughs> I made a mess. All right, well, anyway, um, all right, so that one is done. Let me see if I can clean my fingers just a tad so that I don't get that color everywhere. All right, so next is the uh, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is one of my favorite colors of all time. I love this color. It doesn't look very yellow, um, but it has just such a, it's actually a very autumnal color, but I just love it. I mean, I add it to just so many different things. I, I don't know, it's one of my go-to colors. Um, and here's the Azo Yellow Medium. And let's see. So this one, I think I'll go over here. And I'm not filling up the wells. I'm just putting maybe half, maybe half. So that's that one. And then the nice bright yellow. I love a bright yellow. 
uh, yellow, besides pink, is one of my, probably my second favorite color is yellow. Now, speaking of pink, there's no pink in here. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so I'm turning this around. Now I'm going to put the white up here. You know, I'm going to actually keep it like this. Um, I'm going to put the white up here. I'll be curious to use the white. I can't wait to see what it does because I really do not know. I don't know. I'm going to put the gray right next to it. Um, the Payne's gray. You know, maybe I'll... I'm just trying to think. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go right next to the white with the Payne's gray. It's almost like having white and black next to one another. Now, the white is called Chinese white, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that is, so I guess I'll find out. So here we go with the green. One green. This is a very... Uh, like grass green, very green green. And then this one is the Viridian, Viridian, and I don't have a Viridian. I'm gonna actually skip a well and go over one. I tend to buy lot, a lot of greens, and that is because I do a lot of leaves. Uh, green is probably my least favorite color but because I do a lot of leaves, I like to have an assortment of greens. And then I'm gonna put my, you know, I'm gonna put this blue here. And I'll tell you why I skipped the wells that I skipped. I really, in my head, I have like a reason for it. And I'll tell you in a second. Let me get this last one out. So what will happen overnight is, and it might take two days, these will just dry. I'm gonna leave them open on my work area, and in a day or two, they will dry up and be nice and hard. So let me explain why I left the empty wells where I left them. So like over here, it's really just about in my head, okay, if I want to get some more Van Gogh, if I really like this paint, you know, that's why spending $30 on 12 colors is like really, really, really good. Um, because, you know, it's, I don't know, I, I don't know. I think it's a good price and it gives you a chance to try something. The color palette was really great. Um, but the reason why I leave the wells empty, well, first of all, is because I have more wells than paint, uh, Van Gogh paint, but like, so this is a really deep red. This is more of an orange red. I'm, I'm going to cough. <coughs> Excuse me. So that means like I can put, um, a different red here, maybe pink, pink, maybe a different yellow here. Right over here, I have the white and the Payne's gray, but I could easily see putting more greens in here. And then a purple. So that's my thought process on doing this. So like I said, I'm just going to leave it for a day or two, and then I will start painting with it. I'll do a swatch card. So I have, you know, swatch cards of my, of my different, um, my different palettes. So like this swatch card, I don't know why I did it on such a small piece of watercolor paper, but it is the swatch card for this palette right here. And this palette is big. And so every time I would get a new color, I'm like, like squeezing it in here. Uh, but then on the back, I did a bigger uh, swatch so that, you know, I could see it better. But what this does is it helps me to know what the colors are in this palette, right? So if I didn't know what the third green over was, I can look here and say, oh, okay, the third green over is Cascade Green. So yeah, it's super helpful. And of course it shows you the color of, of the paint. 
So that's it. So let me know what you think of this particular watercolor set. Um, I'm really loving this case. I really am. I really am. I, I wish it had the wells in it to where I could use it as my palette. I even list, lifted up this piece where the paints sit and I, I pried it up. <laughs> But it, but nothing, no, it, it's not under there. So anyway, I gave it a try. So let me know what you think. And um, I'll be back with some paintings with this palette. All right, thanks everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you enjoyed this or not. If I don't get any comments, I'll know that you did not enjoy it. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I don't know, you know? It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm new to all this. <laughs> but anyway, okay, um, thank you so much. All right, bye-bye.